بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی نیم از حبیب النساء اینڈ دی رول نمبر از بی ٹو ون سکس فائیو ٹو زیرو سیونٹی ٹو مائی گروپ نمبر از ففٹی تھری اینڈ دی ٹاپک دیٹ ہیز بین سائن ٹو می از ڈائبٹیز ملائٹ ڈائبٹیز سب ٹاپک از انسولین ریکوائرمنٹ ان رینل فیلئر سو ان آڈر ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دا ڈس آڈر دیٹ از ڈائبٹیز ملائٹس یو مسٹ فرسٹ نو دیٹ ودر وچ آرگن از گیٹنگ افیکٹنگ ان دس ڈیزیزز سو دا آرگن از افیکٹنگ دیٹ از پینکریاز Actually, the pancreas is producing the peptide hormone that is insulin, glucagon, and superstatin, and these hormones are playing the important role in the regulating the metabolic activities of the body. So, there must be a question arising in your mind that whether what is diabetes mellitus. So, the diabetes mellitus is uh, this disorder which is really prevailing throughout the whole world, and most of the people are getting affected by diabetes mellitus of every age. So diabetes mellitus is commonly known as a diabetes and is a metabolic disease that causes the high blood sugar. The hormone insulin moves sugar from the blood into your cells to be stored or used for the energy. With diabetes, your body either does not make enough insulin or can't effectively use the insulin it does make. So uh, the incidence of diabetes is growing rapidly in the whole world, in the United States, or you can say the world, right? And uh, you must know that it is uh, actually the heterogeneous group of syndrome, which is characterized by the elevated blood glucose attributed to relative or absolute deficiency of insulin. So according to the American Diabetes Association, that is, uh, in short, we can say ADA, is recognizing the four clinical classification of diabetes, that is type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, gestational diabetes, and diabetes due to other causes, the mm, genetic effects or medication. But here I'm going to di- discuss only two, di- uh, two types of diabetes, that is type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. So type 1 diabetes is uh, actually mostly affected in children, or you can say the young adults, and it is actually the autoimmune diseases, disease, and it occurs when the insulin producing added cells in the pancreas are completely destroyed. So the body cannot produce any insulin, and the disease is characterized by an absolute deficiency of insulin due to the destruction of uh, beta cells. And without beta cells, the pancreas fails to respond to glucose, and a person with type, two, type 1 diabetes show the classic symptoms of insulin deficiency and which leads the which leads to polydipsia polyphagia and polyuria and you can say the weight loss and in type 2 diabetes the islet cells are still working however the body is resistant to insulin so in short if i just discriminate between the two types of diabetes you can just say that in type 1 diabetes the age of onset is usually the childhood or puberty, whereas in type 2 diabetes, the age is mostly over the age of 35. And uh, if you are discuss, if you're going to discuss the nutritional status, so in type 1 diabetes, commonly the patient is under nourished condition, whereas in type 2 diabetes, the patient is obese. Okay, now further that is the diabetes uh, affecting the organs. So diabetes are majorly affecting the three organs, which is drastically affecting the or- these three organs. That is diabetic, uh, that is diabetic retinopathy, diabetic neuropathy, diabetic nephropathy. So uh, which means that it's affecting the CNS system, the, uh, the brain, that is the brain, the eye and the kidney. Whether um, other than this, it's also affecting the heart, the induced blood flow can also causing the edema. So all these are the side effects. So you can see the symptoms. Now the insulin requirement in renal failure, the kidney is responsible for about 30 to 80% of insulin removal and induced kidney function is associated with the prolonged insulin half-life and decrease in insulin requirement as the aphardic line, which means that the person should have to take the uh, uh, insulin dose in a less amount so in order to get rid of the insulin from your body because the renal is, is the kidney is not working. And in type 2 diabetes mellitus, the management and renal failure also require dose adjustment depends upon the severity. Now, uh, we have a case study here. And in this case study, 
uh, we are having the Mrs. Jones, which is um, like who is uh, presented to the clinic today after being referred by a clinic diabetic educator for evaluation of her diabetes. And she was noted to having a preperendial blood sugar, sugar that is reading ranging from 150 to 200 mg per dl. So what is preperendial pre blood sugar? Preperendial sugar is actually the sugar before the meal. That is, uh, that is the fasting. And the mostly for the normal person, it should be between the 120. It should be between the 110 to 120 like this. But as it is showing that is 150 to 200, it is clearly showing that the this is zone is the patient of uh, patient of the diabetes. And she has some mild exercise intolerance, which means that she is uh, uh, like she's uh, facing some exercise uh, uh, problem in the exercise and uh, having a lower leg edema. And her past medical history includes a hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and hypercholesterolemia. Now, we have uh, mm, she has elevated blood sugar during previous annual, annual uh, visits, and uh, because of that, she is taking the metformin therapy for about six months, and uh, which is uh, still not. Uh, she was gaining control over it, but nowadays she's again. Uh, like she's again a little bit going towards the hyperglycemia. So in order to uh, achieve her goal that is 110 to 140, there should be a little bit change in her dose. So Mrs. Jones is denying that she is not having any kind of uh, nausea or weight loss, or, sorry, the fluctuation in weight or vomiting, palpitation, etc. So further thing is that is subjective. So chief complaint, Mrs. Jones presenting to the clinic today, like she was having a mild exercise intolerance. She was having a lower leg edema and his, her history of illness was like she was having a hypertension, diabetes and hypercholesterolemia. And she is obviously having elevated blood sugar during previous annual visits. So the objective is the vital sign that is BP, that is 132 64, which is showing that it is a normal where is the heart rate is 64, which is a little bit low. And BMI is also 25, that is uh, according with a little bit normal. Whereas the, uh, the total blood count, total blood count, that is WBCs is 8.92, RBCs is 5.04, hemoglobin is 12.5, fatal is 35, 351, and uh, all these things. So, but the glucose, the ketamine, and albumin, everything is showing that there must be a kidney failure uh, symptoms in the person, in the, uh, in the lady. Okay, whereas the urine analysis is positive for protein, and which means that there is the uh, protein present in the urine. And uh, that is again clearly showing that the person is the patient of the chronic, you can say the chronic kidney failure. Whereas the LDL is also high, the cholesterol HDL is 3.5, the hemoglobin level is uh, 9.7, which is again a very high, which is again very high, it should be between the 6.5. Okay, now our past medical history, uncontrolled type 2 diabetes or metformin therapy, as already discussed that she was taking the metformin, which was not affecting, uh, affecting uh, the diabetes, so we will have to uh, replace it. Another thing is for hypertension, she was taking lisinopril. And uh, for hyperlipidemia, she was taking atorvastatin, that is 20 mg daily. Whereas for coronary artery diseases, she was taking Plavix, that is 75 mg daily. Whereas uh, she was also having the edema, so for that purpose, she was taking the 20 mg of furosemide, that is furosemide, that is diuretic. Okay, now, now the physical assessment is uh, her heart or vascular, regular right and rhythm without appreciating gallops or murmurs. Her lungs clear bilaterally with good air exchange, her muscles, musculoskeletal, that is good range of motion, all major joint without pain. And the next thing is assessment and diagnosis. So diagnosis, this is, uh, you can say the very major part of the SOAP that is, uh, you have uh, at school, you that SOAP is a subjective, objective, the assessment and the plan. So uh, here we are having a diagnosis. diagnosis. So in this, uh, we have uncontrolled type 2 diabetes mellitus. Uh, HB uh, level is uh, hemoglobin. Glucose level is the elevated. That is very high. And um, this is showing that there is a consequences of poor control of her blood sugar, leading to the heart, the kidney, retinal, and vascular diseases. 
Stage 3A, chronic, uh, chronic renal disease with protein in urea. It is showing that there is a urine, there is a protein in the urine and um, there is a protein in the blood indicating moderate kidney diseases and lower extremity diseases also there. So uh, we have already discussed the, 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 the diagnosis and the, the physical assessment. So according to all the factors here, we are going to give the proper treatment to the patient. So uh, the plan and treatment should be, we have to set the goal for the patient that her blood glucose level should be below 9.7. And for that, we're gonna, we gonna like replace the, uh, the metformin with the DDD4 inhibitor. So, um, so stopping the metformin and uh, adding the genomet for 25 to 100,000 BID would likely show the improvement in the glucose level. Okay, um, stage three of chronic renal diseases with proteinuria. This is uh, clearly showing that it, this is due to the hypertension, diabetes. So, in order to uh, to treat the chronic renal diseases, you have to control the uh, the hypertension and diabetes. Another thing is uh, offer to increase the Lessex for a few days to see if this helps with the swelling and mild dyspnea with activity. So, we'll give the Lessex for the 40 mg daily for three days and when you see there is a little bit um, management in the diseases, then we will shift the dose from 40 to 20 mg daily dosage. Okay, so follow up simply see her doctor in four weeks for basic metabolic panel and in three months for the hemoglobin um, a glucose level in the blood and for basic metabolic panel and urine analysis discuss sign and symptoms of hyperglycemia, infection and hyperglycemia. So in clearly in this yeah, so far we are just uh, treating the patient of the renal failure and uh, we are just shifting the, uh, the dose the dose uh, the medicine from the metformin to the DPT4 and I, I hope so it is been clear by me. Thank you.